And the piston's coming with it. It's seized. Oh, it's so stuck. <laughs> It would be really, really, really cool to just slap it back together and put some fresh fuel in it and start it up. Field repair. Send it out. That'll buff. <laughs> this Ryan knows how to start his engine. We have an engine that doesn't work. Pull starter is pretty locked up. What do you think went wrong with it? I have a few ideas, but let's find out together. I'm gonna start by taking it apart and diagnosing the problem, but the motor won't start, won't fly, and suddenly turned off in flight. Motor out landing. So I have an idea that, first of all, I wanted to fly this motor. So I was like, hey bro, cool, good flight. Give me the motor, give me your helmet. I set up the glider and everything, and then I went to pull the rope, and the rope was like, <laughs> Sounds like it's locked up. It's stuck. <laughs> That's a good sign that the motor's burned up. And he said he thinks it's out of gas. And looked at the gas and it's clear. It looks like a water. <laughs> if you know anything about flying these, the oil has colors. I'm gonna take this spark plug off and first of all, it's gonna tell me a lot of information. I didn't pull it out yet. I just cracked it loose. Actually, it looks normal. Color's great. The color's there, like correct mixture. So that's a color I would fly in like coffee brown. So I'm gonna put that down. Also, we wanna give a shout out to these prop hubs called Iris Paramotor Prop Hubs. And we got them linked in the description. They're like really quick release style. This is not even the newest one. This is the old one. And there's a newer one that goes even faster if you're into that. But I just wanted to show that off. And it's very tight. There you go. If you wanna have a quick release prop hub, just like this little majiggy. Just hit the link down below, we got them. And I need to pull off this cooling shroud and the exhaust. Let me get these little tools out. Story of the motor, it's got, I forgot how many hours, but about 150 or something like that. And he said he's a little bit late on the maintenance, so it shows that it's got a crack in the exhaust too. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pull this cooling shroud off. Usually the nut comes off, but the whole stud came out. So we're gonna get to it step by step and learn together what happened. I'm gonna open the head and hopefully we get to see the damage. My guess is that the piston ring locked up. I'm taking out these little bolts. Get down here, take out the next ones. And we ordered a new exhaust for it already. So that's coming in and I get to restore it and do all the other maintenance soon. I guess I'll drop every screw on camera, that's awesome. All right, so pretty easy going so far. What we're gonna do is get the spark plug wire out the way. The top of the cooling shroud is coming off, bottom's off. So now we're gonna look at the head. Those are 10 millimeters. Okay, that one was tight. That one was tight. And he's not alone being at 100 or 150 hours without much maintenance because these kinds of engines don't require a lot of maintenance. They're pretty resilient. You can fly them hard and just keep putting gas in them. But the guess is that we don't have enough oil in the gas. Something happened to burn it up. It's kind of hard to burn up this brand motor. It's not like you're burning it up too often. But my guy Ryan, he knows what's up. Full throttle kind of guy. <laughs> just crack the seal and it looks really good. There's like a slight leak around this O-ring, but overall it didn't leak a bunch of black oil out the side. That's clean, burning clean. O-ring's good. Sure, it blew by a little bit, but it's not anything significant to cause it to burn up. So I'm gonna take this same wrench and push the exhaust over and work on pulling the first one. Oh, that's so tight. I wonder, actually, I have a spring puller. That would be a little less work. Let me get that. All right, so you pull those springs, pull the other springs. So now I can pull off the jug here. The piston's coming with it, it's seized. <laughs> uh, first of all, feeling around it, the cylinder's smooth at this part. Oh, it's so stuck. I can't. It's hot up. I'm pulling. <laughs> it doesn't even move. 
Oh man, that thing is stuck. The piston ring has locked up to the cylinder wall and it is gonna be hard to get it out without causing any damage. Usually it feels a little slippery in there, but it feels so far from slippery right now. It's dry as it gets. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so we got a few topping tools and I'm gonna put a cap full of oil in the uh, cylinder, a little two cycle oil and I'm gonna try to lubricate it up. If we can get any oil to go through there, the idea is that the motor didn't have enough oil and it's, it's like a two cycle engine is sliding metal on metal with oil as the lubricant to prevent it from locking up. This one's too far gone, it's burned up. Uh, I'm gonna try like this way, that's wood. Kinda need another hand to hold it. I think it moved a little bit. You wanna block it under it? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I could put it on that side. That's working. <laughs> Oh, I got a movement. Yeah, it's gonna work. We freed it up. It doesn't freely move though, that's <laughs> for sure. Ugh. Okay. All right, so I got the cylinder off. Yeah, it's got a little bit of, <laughs> definitely has a little bit of scratch mark in the wall here. Ooh, two sides. So it has this uh, special coating make a sill coating inside so you can't like hone it out like old cylinders without the coating okay so yeah if you take a look you can actually see the rips in it i can't say i've like tried to fly one with scratches in the side but ryan i'm pretty sure you you'd give it a try maybe not so we can give it a try to uh buff out that stuff from this make a sill coating getting like a brass brush or something soft to try to clean it up. But until then, let's just keep tearing it down. This is the real damage, you can see it. The piston side, it's like really, really, really machined looking and silvery and shiny. And I think the other side's gonna show that too. So she's cooked. Yeah, you see that? Wow. So it's not actually as bad as I thought. The piston's okay. Like it still has a dome on the top. It's not even caved in. I mean, the side of it's got a little scratch, but the ring is what it slides on. So what I can do is just take out this ring. Yeah, I really don't have any experience trying to run a scratched up cylinder to know if it would work. Dude, you know what? It would be really, really, really cool to just slap it back together and put some fresh fuel in it and start it up because it's not totally, like I have samples on my shelf that are just no chance to fly. They will never work. Like a ditch, like the rice farm, like the pond over there, like that's how deep of a groove. Where this doesn't have a huge deep groove in it. It's got like a slight one and the ring quality is really good. Like it goes at this alignment. So if the ring had given out, it would be here. And I can't even feel anything wrong with the first ring. Let me get on the second one. Yeah, and like if you've already gotta buy a new part, you might as well, what do we say, send it or bend it? So. You might as well have some fun with it. Yeah, doing it for science. Dude, this ring is fine. It's not even got a single sticky part at all. So that's cool, bottom and top ring. And let's check it out some more while we're here. I mean, the rag's not even getting hung up on it. That's cool. They, these little shavings might have fallen down in the crank and cause it to lock up there. So here in a second, I can check if it turns over at all. Dude, so far so good, look. All right, so that's really, really, really impressive. That's cool. That's way better than I thought. I thought it would be like the pond over there with grooves in it and just seized out. Usually that's the case. So let me get actually over here. So the ring has a little step down notch. It's got a stud here. You can see this little stud. So what I do is pry open the ring. I dropped it in and this ring is the bottom. All right, so the ring is in the bottom. We get the top ring, cha-ching. If you've flown any amount of time, you've definitely burned up the motor. 
I've cooked a few of them myself over the years. Oh man, that's way too much. I thought that was really empty. What a mistake. I'm putting oil all over the cylinder to get it slippery again. So we need to lubricate the metal surfaces with this oil. All right, so now that I've got the oil, it's better late than never. Gasket looks good on the bottom, good enough for a flight. So I'm gonna slide the cylinder back onto these studs here. I'm gonna pull the rope, get the piston lower. And as it slides down, I have to pinch the ring. So I get to pinch in one ring at a time. And we'll just see if it fits. I mean, this is kind of a uh, risky. Man, it's kind of hard to fit a locked up piston back in, but we got it. Yeah, it's probably not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, it needs some more polishing than that, you see? <laughs> There's no chance, buddy. So we, we thought we would just put oil on it, but it's actually too late. It's already burned. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. So we're gonna have to work on sanding it to reduce. I'm sanding the inside of my jug, man. Got some scratches in there. A little bit of residual aluminum from the piston. But we taking care of it, man. I'm trying to field repair this thing. <laughs> yeah, Phil. Serious field repair. Look at those beautiful scratches in there. I already got this side sanded. Feels good to the touch. So we're gonna try the other side and then we'll see, see if we can get that uh, piston to kind of slide in and out of there. We uh, noticed the exhaust port is clogged up. You can see the crud coming out of it. Blackness. Ooh, let there be light. You can see through. Cool, so that's your decompression port. All right, look, you see that? That's gonna make it easier to pull start. I think I'm just about there, man. We're ready for a drop-in install over here. I got the rings, I'm pinching them and everything. Okay, we got one ring. I'm trying for I'm two. I got two. Yeah, all right. Cha-ching, okay, field repair. We found the problem. So since we found the problem, we can fix the problem. Look at that. Faster than Amazon repairs. As usual, put some slippery oil in there. The head's perfect, look at that. Still smooth. We're gonna skip the shroud install right now. We're just gonna start it. We should mix the fuel this time. We're learning together. You can roast the engine with no oil in the gas. Sand it out, that'll buff. <laughs> and then put it back together and fire it up. Power of Viterazzi, <laughs> can't kill him. Okay, and then I'm gonna work on the next part because we're trying to get the fuel out the line that's unmixed. We're gonna pop that off. Ooh, nice thermals, you feel that one? That's huge. Okay, uh, we can prime it. We have way less than one liter, or about one. Four, three, two, one, and less than one. If I do two and 2.6 per gallon, do about that much for the liter, which is about a third. So that'll richen it up. Well, the yeah. first thing, I'm gonna mix it now. All right, so the fuel's mixed. That one is mixed already, that's a good blend. This is awesome. That's so cool. So we're learning, you can sand it down and not sure it'll work, but we're gonna find out. I think it'll work. Click, click. It's a torque wrench here, click, click. We're skipping the shroud just in case we need to take it off again soon. Okay, we'll get the spark plug wrench too. It's on the table. This is 17 foot pounds. Click, click. And the next thing is exhaust springs. All right, we got four springs. Six. Seven. And then I need to tighten up this one. I started to loosen it. All right, those are tight. These are a hazard to go in the prop, so I'm gonna take them off. We're supposed to drain the fuel out that's unmixed. So we're clearing out the straight gas into the mixed gas because we don't want to burn it up again and have to sand it out one more time. That's enough. Once was enough. And then let's zip your fuel hose. Got the screwdriver ready. So the plug's tight and the exhaust is installed. And now for the air box, wipe off this grease, oil, wipe this. 
We should feature your other cracked air box just to let everyone know that everything's cracked on this motor. <laughs> and it's still running. And we'll take some warranty support. I know Viterazzi's gonna watch this. Now let's put that safety strap, Velcro technology. Dude, I'm so excited to prime it and start it. <laughs> this is excellent, dude. Then we gotta go fly it for sure. Dude, I don't know if I have enough time to put on the prop. Might as well get that quick release. Hit the link, you know what I'm saying? Probably takes longer to purchase it than mount the prop. So what I do with this when I find the little groove and I pull that plate back, is I have this one on my pop. It's like at some point you, you can't tighten it, so you have to loosen it. Go back one, probably two. That's how you fold it in. Cha-ching. So here we go, I'm gonna prime the engine, squirt some fuel inside, go here. Now let's check the throttle. Anytime you work on a motor, you check the throttle. Returns to zero. Looks great. You can ground start trikes. It's kind of hard to wear them. Since Ryan knows how to start his engine. We didn't prime it. I primed it a lot. Okay. Probably too much. Yeah, too much, so I'm holding full throttle to start it. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Sounds successful to me. So now I get to go fly your trike, because I wanted to fly it, but when I went to pull the rope, it was stuck. Ah, <laughs> uh, that sounds great. So cracked air box, cracked exhaust, and a scorched up piston still runs great. Starts on the first pull. Alright, I'm gonna go fly it. Like and subscribe, but if you like it, hit the like button. What's taking you so long? We just fixed a total motor. For you. That's sick.